Illinois faces some big challenges. Today, you're about to hear a truly honest analysis of the problems we face. Equally important, you'll also hear an in-depth discussion of some practical solutions. This is your radio source for stories, the insight, and the answers you won't hear anywhere else. Not on the media and not coming from Springfield. You're listening to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Opportunity Project. Now, here's your host, AM 560's Dan Proft. Welcome to another edition of Illinois Rising. I'm Pat Hughes of the Illinois Opportunity Project, filling in for Dan Proft, who's taking this Sunday afternoon off. Joining me uh, is a person we've had on the show to co-host again and a friend of the program, Brian Timponi. As everybody knows, uh, Brian Timponi is my uh, favorite media expert to have on the program. He uh, owns and operates a bunch of different uh, media entities. He's a a well-known, well-read person on the issues that we talk about on the show. So, Brian, thanks for joining us. Very kind, Pat. Thank you. So, uh, big week uh, this week in the uh, Diana Rauner email world. Uh, there is a group uh, out of Paris, Illinois, in Edgar County. They're actually called the Edgar County Watchdogs. If people don't know where this area is. It's about an hour south of Champaign and along the Indiana border. And the Edgar County Watchdogs are a couple of uh, fine gentlemen who. Uh, do real transparency work. They want to make sure that government is transparent, that the uh, leaders of our government are responsive to the people. And so they've dedicated time and effort to this uh, and and do a great job of it. They uh, came up this week with something that was a couple of things that were really incredible, uh, including an email from Diana Rahner on HB 40, which I think everyone who listens to this program knows is the abortion funding bill that uh, Governor Rahner uh, signed into law, the only governor uh, in the country that would, has ever signed a, a bill like this that has public funding for abortion. So, Brian, w- really quickly, before we bring on uh, Kirk Allen from Edgar County Watchdogs, w- w- what happened with that email? So there's always been a suspicion that Diana Rauner has undue influence in the governor's office and that uh, the governor's office is being run by the political operation and Diana Rauner is highly involved in that with, with that. Um, and so this this email and several others that have been unearthed by the watchdogs uh, are smoking guns, more or less, that, that show that, uh, that yes, uh, Diana Rauner is, um, has authority in this office on uh, decisions that are not just political but, but policy-oriented, and, um, and that she's the one who is signing off on uh, statements by the governor and, uh, and also... Uh, policy decisions. So in this case, it was a, a you know an email that uh, talked about um, the HB 40 bill and what Governor Rauner's statement would be after it was signed. And, and she was uh, imploring you know, government staff that uh, say, say, to say, look, uh, I need to sign off on this. That is, that is the, the protocol in the office. And of course, um, the idea that the protocol in the office, that, that the formal process uh, requires, you know, the unelected first lady to sign off on these things is a bit abhorrent. Yeah, and the, the, just reading from this particular email, I the, this is what it says. This is what Diana Rona wrote. I would suggest Governor Rahner is committed to protecting women's reproductive rights and has a consistent record of standing up for women's rights. He won't comment further on a bill that has not been sent to his desk. Happy to discuss further, but per protocol, I expect to sign off on the final version. Thanks. I expect to sign off on the final version. Diana Rahner uh, referring to herself. Joining us to discuss this email and more is Kirk Allen of the Edgar County Watchdogs. Kirk, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. So take the listeners through sort of what your view of uh, this email and, 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 and put it in context for why this per protocol statement is so important. My understanding is you did a, a FOIA request asking if there was a protocol for matters like this, and the response was, oh, no, there is no protocol. Correct. They, uh, the FOIA request basically asked for any protocol pertaining to the First Lady signing off on any final version of bills. And they said there is no documents responsive to my request. Now, they didn't say there was no protocol. They just simply said there's no documents. Um, So now the question is, is there an unwritten protocol? And based on other information we have and and future things that are going to be exposed in emails, we would say there's definitely a protocol being followed. So uh, I I think if you read this email that uh, Diana Rahner has, and and, and let the folks know where they can go specifically read it, at your website, right? What's the website address? 
That's Illinois Leaks, L E A K S dot com or the Edgar County Watchdogs dot com. That's all spelled out. And it and, and the story on this and this email, the text of it are posted there, correct? Yes, they are. The emails are in the article, and they're also downloadable. Uh, just a simple click, you can download the actual document that uh, we obtained through our sources. Yeah, and so just so people are clear, and I read this before, but now in the context of what Kirk said, I think it's really important to repeat. What, what Diana Rahner says with respect to you know crafting a statement on HB 40 is that she's happy to discuss further, but per protocol, I expect to sign off on the final version, I. Um, and that's the part that's really incredible, right? You have a governor of a state uh, signing incredible legislation. And with respect to statements and opportunity with respect to that, Diana Rotter is saying that she has the control to sign off, this sort of uh, this person who's been unelected. Yeah, it, it's pretty shocking. And, you know, we were told by the governor he was, would void or uh, veto that bill. And he told the cardinal he wouldn't sign it. And,. So we, you know, we have to ask the question: Did the bill get to that office, and she signed off on it, and instructed him, "Yes, you are going to sign it." Those are questions we probably won't ever get answered, but all indications are she signed off on the final version. You know, when it got to his desk, and per protocol, we now have taxpayer-funded abortions on demand. Hey, Kirk, it's Brian Timponi. Uh, there's kind of a pattern here in the governor's office. Uh, of trying to hide Diana Rauner's role and the importance of it. Um, you guys did a FOIA asking for emails from Diana Rauner. Um, what, what, did they, what, what did they report back? How many emails uh, has, has Diana Rauner sent last summer? And what, what was the answer? We re- yeah, we requested a nine-month window of her emails sent and received, and the response was that there were over 7,500 emails, so our request was unduly burdensome. And they, you know, we narrowed our request. In fact, I got a response yesterday that you know, they're extending me another five days from my narrowed request, which you know, my original request is when the clock starts ticking, but they've you know, seemed to invoke additional time, and I think that's probably because the election's coming up. Yeah, 7,500 emails from the First Lady, pretty, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, Kirk, they're, they're like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz when the Wicked Witch of the West has her captured and there's that giant hourglass and the sand is running out on it, right? Do you get the sense that they're wanting that sand to run out before you oh, uh, make a determination that, that something damaging is going to come out? Because mm-hmm. to me, just on the surface and sort of what people know, you know, generally what's been reported, it seems like Diana Rahner... Um, you know, Jeannie Ives might not be the first women gov- woman governor in the state of Illinois, that that might be Diana Rauner. And, 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 and particularly for conservatives, uh, you know, both up, up here in the northern part of the state and, and down by you and all, all the way in between, that's not what any of those folks signed up for. That is correct. And I, I can tell you the other emails that we have that we're, we're compiling and finishing up for our third, you know, third series on this, it's very clear that politics is what's leading policy in the governor's office. And the first lady is at the forefront of it, as well as state employees and media groups out of Washington, D.C. So clarify that. Are you, are you saying that you have information that leads you to believe that there's some conflation between the uh, policy uh, shop, the government shop, not the policy shop, but the government shop, uh, the official side of, 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 of Governor Rauner's duties, and the people who are advising him politically. Absolutely. The emails confirm that. Um, there's no question these emails that we've obtained directly tie politics and strategizing of politics directly to policy, one of them being the education bill. And we hope to be able to put that story out this afternoon. Uh, it's pretty compelling when you see the, the chain of emails and how all this was orchestrated. So, uh, Kirk, can you talk a little about the... the um the, the idea that, you know, sunlight uh, can be a disinfectant in when it comes to the, the FOIA, a lot of these um, politicians aren't used to, you know, they do things assuming that they're never going to see the light of day. In this case, um, do you think, you know, Governor Rauner, uh, when he took office and when Diana Rauner got into office, do you think they were prepared that, 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 they, that they, they thought people like you could actually, you know, unearth these things and, and tell people the truth? They thought they'd just kind of get away with it, right? Uh, that no one would ask. A lot of the times these folks 
but then they don't give it a thought because they're not, you know, familiar with what the law says. But let's just assume for a second, when we see this all the time, the public body says, or the governor's office says, well, just don't give it to them, you know, claim an exemption. Well, that's fine. The problem is there's good people working in our state government. And I can't tell you statewide how many hundreds of whistleblowers we have. We have people begging for for their higher-ups to do the right thing instead of cover things up. And the stuff that filters into us comes from sources all across the state. And I don't think that's the equation that they ever thought would be a factor. Uh, you know, they thought they could control and influence and persuade people to do what they want. And unfortunately, we still have good, honest people in the state. Well, I think unfortunately it, for them, yeah, I, 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 I think that I think that, you know, the reality of it is if you're a good leader and you're leading ethically and you're leading in the positive, proper way and you're fulfilling the promises you made to people, then the people who work for you are going to be loyal and they're not going to leak out stuff about you that's negative. But if you do the opposite, that's a whole different story. He's Kirk Allen from the Edgar County Watchdogs. Kirk, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it.